Storm tracker Jim Cantori is live in Pasadena this hour. And Jim, we were talking last segment about a tweet, tweet that was coming in talking about how we're going to probably remember this windstorm for a long time to come. No doubt the folks there in Pasadena will. Yeah, absolutely. This one coming in a little different direction, Nick, from the north as opposed to the east northeast. So that's why I think Pasadena was hit very hard. I mean, look at it. this. Looks like you would something you'd see after a hurricane. You've got debris up and down the street. Uh, you know, it's in piles. Some people have cleaned their yards. Some are just still littered with the debris at this time. But you can see magnolia, Chinese elm. I mean, just about every tree here, and some of these very old trees. So they've obviously gone through Santa Ana uh, events before protected somewhat here in Pasadena from the San Gabriel Mountains. But in this case, with the winds out of the north, uh, they weren't protected at all. And we pretty much got the full brunt of this. Winds gusted anywhere, in my estimation, of 60 to 80 miles per hour. We've had shingle damage. We've had power lines down. And uh, obviously, it's great to see these guys, right, the utility companies uh, that are out here uh, hoping to get things back online. Hey, guys, good to see you. All right, let me take you back to what started all this this morning, I think, as far as giving it scope. Uh, this is the shell station that we came in upon when we came into Pasadena and this huge tree. This is a before and after here as they're starting to clean this up. But, it, you know, just this huge uh, ficus tree, I think this is, it, it just pretty much split in two, a piece of it falling on the overhand of the gas station. Thank goodness around midnight last night, nobody was under those pumps or they would have been absolutely crushed. Now, the cleanup crews got in here about 7.30, 8 o'clock this morning, and they really did a job on this. I mean, it's amazing. They just went through this thing like a hot knife through butter, pretty much loaded up a lot of these trucks or a lot of these big limbs and, and, and either shredded them and made mulch out of them or took, obviously, the bigger ones they couldn't put through the shredder away and, uh, and, and got that place uh, cleaned up nicely. But that was still a very dangerous tree, Nick, being the fact that it had split in half now. The other half of it uh, could easily fall over tonight, even if we get 50 to 60 mile per hour winds. So again, here in Pasadena, we may not have these 60 to 80 mile per hour winds, but if we get 40 to 60 tonight, that could still cause some problems. With the There's a lot of trees that are still teetering, and obviously still a lot of people across Los Angeles uh, that are without power. Right now, two of the main power companies still reporting about 340,000 without power at this time. Strong winds causing quite a bit of damage across Southern California. The biggest problem, after all the rain we've had, trees are really no match for these winds. Eyewitness News reporter Darsha Phillips live in San Fernando where a massive tree has fallen there. But it's not the only one, Darsha. Yeah, that is correct, Philip. We've seen uh, trees fall all across our area, but here in San Fernando, you can see that this tree completely uprooted. This is a massive oak, and the winds were so strong that it just completely uprooted it from here on the sidewalk, also crushing an SUV, if you can see it over there. But this tree sp is spreading all across the west lanes of Brand Boulevard here in San Fernando, blocking it off for about a block, and it also snapped off this palm tree as you can see, just completely snapped it like a twig. That's how heavy these oak trees are. And again, this is not the only tree that has fallen. We're seeing this all across our area. Strong winds are to blame for more damage in Pacific Palisades on Sunset and Brook Tree Road. A tree fell over onto a moving SUV. The driver amazingly was not injured, just a bit shaken up. And in Whittier, another tree toppled over crushing a parked SUV and causing minor damage to vehicles around it. And I heard a loud crash outside the, uh, outside the house. It sounded like thunder. And I wasn't sure if like, maybe part of my roof blew off or something and came running out front and saw I had this big tree laying on my truck. And then I ran across the street and saw my neighbor's truck got cut in half by the tree, so I guess I escaped pretty good. Now back here live, we are still awaiting word as to when this mess will be cleaned up. Again, about a block of Brand Boulevard is closed off because this tree is completely blocking the west lanes here. Now, strong winds are also to blame for more power outages across our area. 6,000 homes and businesses are said to be without power this morning and system-wide 32,000, over 32,000 homes and businesses, according to SoCal Edison, are also in the dark because of all these strong winds. Reporting live from San Fernando, Darsha Phillips, ABC7 Eyewitness News. All right, Darsha. The winds are also gusting through the valleys and mountains of the Inland Empire, where driving conditions are very hazardous and people are trying to cope. Our team coverage continues with Eyewitness News reporter Amy Powell, who's live in Fontana. And we can see, Amy, it's quite windy where you are. 
Oh, Michelle, we're getting battered by the winds here in Fontana. You can hear it and see it. And take a look over here in the dark. You can see there's a sprinkler, or rather a fountain that looks more like a sprinkler right now. The water's just getting pushed out of it sideways. And we know that even more powerful winds could blow through this area again tomorrow. Tree branches bend, whipped by powerful gusts of wind. And debris flies through the air in the shopping center parking lot. Fontana residents are used to windy weather, but tonight's conditions are potentially hazardous. It's hard to drive in because your car shakes and it's like dangerous, especially with the kids. How is it driving in, in this wind? Uh, it's pretty hard to drive. Um, yeah, you know, the car's moving to the sides and everything, so yeah, it's, it's tough right now to, you know, drive. Many residents bundle up to protect themselves from the chill and rush to their cars. And you can feel the dust and the rocks hitting the windshield of my car. And so it's just really cold. And it's not a good time to be outside. People can get sick and stuff can fly. And it's just, it's Fontana. That's Fontana for you, the windy city of Fontana. These football players brave strong, steady winds and ferocious gusts to get their game in. But it looked like the wind was winning. How hard is it, though, to, like, catch the ball? Oh, we said hard. hard. Concentration is hard. Concentration hard. real hard. Because I'm a quarterback. Yeah, so it's the wind. It'll carry the ball different ways. It's real hard. And when we got here, we was like, wind blowing hard. So what? We came to play. You know? Emmy Smith are playing this wind. Joe Montana. <laughs> Well, they're playing football, and I can barely stand still right now. And another thing a lot of people told me tonight is they were, they're used to the winds here, but this cold weather is something they weren't prepared for. Reporting live from Fontana, Amy Powell, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Well, it's been But first to Eyewitness News reporter Alex Michelson at LAX, where the winds caused a power blackout tonight. Alex? Good evening uh, to Michelle and Mark. The winds continue to blow here at LAX. Things are beginning to calm down a bit after some moments of chaos. Our LAX camera is shaking in the wind when all of a sudden it happens. All the lights go out and one of the nation's busiest airports basically shuts down. It seems like everything stops. You were just forced to a sudden halt. With all the lights out in the surrounding neighborhood, two runways closed because debris flew onto them. I don't know how many planes they stopped, but our plane they had stopped. And so now you're majorly delayed. Now we're majorly delayed. <laughs> Power eventually returned after about an hour, but big backups remained in terms of lines of people and all those cars. Many things remain shut down, like some escalators and most boards announcing departures and arrivals. They should probably come up with better backups, hopefully, in the future. This won't happen. LAX spokesman says that they do have backup generators for emergency equipment, so safety was never compromised here. However, at least three international flights were diverted. We're not allowed to land here because of those problems with the runways. They will now be bused. The passengers will now be bused here. Reporting live from LAX, Alex Michelson, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Alex, thank you very much.